Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Site. I'm the Dork in the Road and today, let's talk about five mistakes that new motorcycle campers make. I'm the Dork in the Road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing. For those of you looking to get into motorcycle camping and hoping to avoid some of the mistakes and pitfalls that can come with transitioning to this world of camping off of your motorcycle, I want to share five things that I've learned, five mistakes that I made actually as a new motorcycle camper to hopefully save you some of the trouble and accelerate your journey into the world of successful, enjoyable motorcycle camping adventures. So that's enough preamble, let's just talk about them. The number one mistake that new motorcycle campers make is bringing too much stuff. I am guilty of this a lot. I am guilty of this to this day. I still bring too much stuff with me, but I have pared down my kit from what I started with. So if you want to see a real example of what it looks like to maybe be bringing too much stuff, take a look at the video which I will link for you. It is my motorcycle camping gear video from the beginning of the 2021 season when I was just getting my setup figured out for last year. Looking back on that, there were quite a few things that ended up getting dumped out of the kit really quickly. Quite a few things that I never touched. One thing I would caution you if you're a car camper like I was before a motorcycle camper, you may have a tendency to take a lot of just-in-case stuff. You know, I always had extra paper towels, extra paper plates. You know, I brought the hot dog sticks, whether I was cooking hot dogs or not. I always got hot cocoa stuff, just a bunch of random stuff, extra, extra, extra everything that in a car, in a camping box that you just throw in makes sense to you. But on a motorcycle trip, you really need to pare that stuff down. While weight is not as much of a concern when motorcycle camping as it is with maybe backpacking, space is. And so if there's stuff you're not using every other trip, aside from your just in case need to have it absolute essentials like extra toilet paper, stuff like that, you can probably take it out of your kit. So I've really got that kit paired down to you know headlamp and one extra light extra batteries for those two things my cooking setup I've got my fire making setup basically what I need to meet the four essentials which I made a video on too which I will link for you but uh, shelter something to sleep on something to eat and something to drink and if you got those four basics covered then bringing tools and stuff like that is also important but focus on that and get your kit as small as you can in order to be comfortable and successful. Which brings me to point number two, the second mistake that new motorcycle campers make, and that's not bringing enough stuff. That's getting in your head that you have to have the most minimal kit possible. Some people are members of the all I need to camp is a wool blanket and a stick camp, and I guess that's great and admirable. I personally don't understand it because I like to be comfortable, but some people really think that going out and suffering as much as possible is somehow enhancing the experience. If you're like that, I would encourage you to consider taking enough things to be comfortable. Sleeping bag, sleeping pad, you know, a full tent if you're not a hammock sleeper. I like to bring an extra blanket almost every time just in case. There are a few just in case items I will take. I know it sounds like I'm contradicting point number one, but you really need to pare down to stuff that you'll use often or that's that you really will want to have in an emergency. So not taking enough stuff is another mistake motorcycle campers make. The number three mistake new motorcycle campers make, and this is a big one, it's not planning ahead. You really need to plan ahead and just have some idea what you're going to do and where you're going to camp and how you're going to get water and where your wood is going to come from and how you're going to build a campfire and all of those things. This is less maybe necessary when you're a little bit more experienced, but when you're starting out, it is really great to go look at the campsite or the campground you're going to camp in ahead of time. Where's the water? Where is access to the bathroom? Can you buy firewood at the campground? Is there wood you can harvest in the area that you're camping? These are not things I want to figure out when I get there, depending on the time of year, because if, especially in like the fall and the spring when it gets dark early, I want to have a plan and idea where those things are coming from and how I'm going to do them. What's the temperature going to be? How many layers do you need? You don't want to sit there and be freezing your butt off because it was 70 when you left, but it's 35 degrees at night. Is it going to rain? Is there a chance of rain? And even then, even if there isn't a chance of rain, what what happens if it does rain? I've been rained on in mid-August here in Oregon. That's super rare, but it does happen, and it's important to have at least some idea what you'll do in that situation. Sometimes the answer is leave, but at least then you know and you've thought ahead. So the number three mistake I think new motorcycle campers make is not planning ahead or not planning ahead enough. That doesn't mean you overthink it so much that you don't go, but it is really important to just kind of think through what you're going to be doing and what you might need to do those things, how long is your trip, and all that stuff. So really planning ahead. Number four, and this one is really specific to 
new motorcycle campers, but still kind of applies to you experienced folks. But the number four mistake new motorcycle campers make is not testing your gear and your setup before you go. And I mean that in two ways. I mean your camping gear and your camping setup, but I also mean your bag setup and how you're going to transport everything on your motorcycle. I highly recommend first thing you do, put your bags on your bike, especially if you're getting new bags or a new bike, do the whole bag setup. Put your camping gear in it, or at least something that weighs as much and is a similar amount of bulk as your camping gear in those bags. And go for a day ride, a short ride, at least a couple hours, and stop and just check out your straps, see if things are flopping or wobbling. How are the things that you strapped on the top holding down? Are your bags moving and making contact with your exhaust or your tire or any other moving parts of your bike? What happens when you sit on the bike and sag down? Where do the bags go then? What does it look like when you go over bumps and stuff? Is anything moving or coming loose? I think it's important to have confidence in that setup and Similarly, I highly recommend for new motorcycle campers what I like to call a shakedown run. And that is an overnight camp using all of your gear somewhere close by or familiar to you. Now, you could pitch your tent in the backyard and sleep out there if you want, but uh, I think it's better to find a local campground or just a spot in the woods or on public land that you know that's close by and take your setup and go out for an easy overnighter. Um, campgrounds are great because there's so many amenities there, so if you forgot something or if you failed in some way, you know, there's a bathroom, there's water, there's probably a camp host on site that'll sell you firewood stuff like that but go out somewhere where the consequences of failure are low somewhere close to a town where you could run into town and get supplies if you need them or even close enough to home that if something was a horrible disaster you just ride in sleep in your house come back in the morning get your gear or whatever but go on that shakedown run somewhere close to home where failure is not the end of your trip before you go out and try a more involved trip before you go out and do a multi-day trip before you go out and try a BDR or something like that or ride really far from home I just think it's important to get a feel for your gear, how it's all going to work together, how it's all going to pack back up, because packing it the first time is one thing, packing it up in camp is another. Really get out and try all that and get a good sense of what you're getting yourself into. And a shakedown run is a great way to do that. So that's number four. The number five mistake that new campers make is going by themselves the first time or the first few times. Camping by yourself is great. I love it as much as I do camping with other people in an equal but different way. But when you're going for the first time or the first couple times, it is really nice to have someone else there for a few reasons. One, if you forgot something, there's a good chance that they might have it. You only need one fire starting kit because you're only gonna have one fire. So if you forgot yours but the other person has it, crisis averted. Uh, it gives you someone to talk to, someone to talk through things with, and someone to help with things like gathering firewood. It sure is nice to not have to do all that by yourself. And also camping for the first time, really getting into camping can be something that makes people anxious. It can make you nervous. There's weird noises in the night. You're out there by yourself and it is so much nicer to have someone else with you. I just feel so much more relaxed when I'm camping with someone else than I do when I'm camping by myself. And that's why I think, especially when you're getting started, it's great to camp with someone else. It's also a lot more fun to camp with someone else, in my experience. Unless you're camping with like a super weirdo or something, but I haven't really had many issues with that. It seems like everyone else I've camped with has though. Is that weird? Hmm. That's the top five mistakes I think new moto campers make. I actually have a bonus one for you. The number six mistake I think motorcycle campers make, bonus mistake, is not cooking. Unless you love dehydrated backpacking meals, which I do not, or just eating a bag of jerky, it is really nice to eat a warm meal while you're camping. And I think a lot of people hesitate to make them or to plan on cooking because they feel like it's going to be complicated. And honestly, it is not as complicated as you make it out to be, depending on what you do. You can bring a pack of pre-cooked sausages, Johnsonville brats or whatever, stick it on a stick, which you find in the woods, and put it in the fire until it's warm and eat it. And that is 10 times better than any dehydrated backpacking meal I have ever had. And it's also just a fun, integral part of camping. Is it camping if you don't cook something on a stick? I don't know. I feel like that's a huge part of camping. I love cooking over the fire, and I think if it's something that concerns you or you feel like it's too complicated, you should reconsider because I think not cooking while you're camping is a mistake. And that's one of my favorite things to do. So that's six. Number seven, bonus, bonus, bonus mistake that mo new motorcycle campers make is not allowing themselves a little space for luxuries. If you want to know what I mean, I made a video about motorcycle camping luxuries that are worth the room in your pack. I'll link that for you. You should check it out. So what do you think? What are mistakes that new motorcycle campers make that I've forgotten to cover? What were mistakes that you made? What was the biggest mistake that you made as a new motorcycle camper? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you and please do not forget to be excellent to each other. I thank you. Excellent!